So some of you might have been wondering, I wonder what's going on in Corey's chart that finally got him to India. I mean, this has been a long time coming for me. I've been into this stuff for 15 years, not just casually, like seriously, as you all know. There's not a lot of white boys that teach themselves Sanskrit, you know? At least back then. Still no. Still I'm pretty sure there's not. Um, but uh, yeah, so just like for my own person, just some personal reflections I'll share. Um, I was in a really tough sub dasha last year. Um, like so many things, one of the toughest things in my chart, one of the toughest devashas, it was getting triggered like by transit, by dasha, even my varsha fall was showing it. And it was, it was basically like, you're gonna get a lot of uh, like negative feedback, like incompatible situations and people and stuff. And that was really true for, for last year, even though, you know, I did my best to deal with it as best I could. But knowing that really helped me to kind of just be like, all right, I need to just keep going. Just don't give up. Keep doing your thing. But like I launched this school. And it's a really good school. But, uh, a cor you know, Vedic astrology courses and nakshatra courses and financial astrology courses. And really only the financial ones did well. And those are the ones that I care the least about. But I mean, I'm good. I'm really good at it. But I just care more about like the spiritual, the heart of Jyotish type stuff. So those courses, like they just haven't really been doing that well. And like the last year, yeah, just not to complain, but just wasn't that great of a year, right? And so then 2023 though, it's been great. <laughs> and why is that? Well, um, uh, a, f a number of factors as it always is. When you're doing astrology, always look for confluence of many factors pointing to one thing. Don't just look for one thing unless it's a really strong factor. One of the main ones was that my sub dasha changed to a really strong moon dasha and the moon is one of the best planets for me because it's in cancer in its own sign and in almost it's in its own sign in almost every varga in my chart and it's uh in the fifth house one of the luckiest houses the house of good past life karma or pur purva punya i'm blanking out if that's the right thing i'm pretty sure that's the right what it's called yeah um but that it's a Sanskrit word, which means like basically your really good karma from past lives, your good gifts, good blessings being given you from past lives. That's your fifth house. And so, yeah, that basically got activated for me. Just like literally the as I was traveling, like as I was in transit, because it takes two days to fly to India from where I live. So that Dasha switched over. And then as soon as I land back on the ground, I'm like in India, you know, and just so happy. And the moon rules happiness. Well, Jupiter too, but cancer, the moon is in cancer, the sign of happiness. Cancer is a sign of happiness. Jupiter is exalted there. So there's a connection there. But the fifth house being the house of good past life karma. And then it's also waxing. It's an almost full, almost full moon. And for Pisces, the cancer is one of the Raja yoga planets or moon is like because it again it rules the fifth the fifth and ninth lords are always important for whatever your lagna is these are the when you um when you have things like the fifth or ninth lords getting activated in your chart they put you on your dharma they put you on your path and like all last year that wasn't happening and I was struggling and I was still on my path but, or at least I don't know if I was or not but I was just it didn't feel like it as much, you know? I was doing my best, but it wasn't really feeling just in the flow, you know? And man, everything has just been just this flow of grace since that switched over. And there's been other good things too, like Jupiter moved into Aries, um, and that's good for me in a lot of ways. Um, Saturn kind of like got further away from certain sensitive points in my chart. Um, but yeah, like all these things together, um, really lined up quite nicely and it looks like my Varsh follow will be good too which is about to start up and then on top of that now Venus just got exalted in Pisces which is my first house my ascendant my body and Venus is the planet of divine love and I'm getting to see Meher Baba's Samadhi I got to see that for the first time yesterday and bow down there <sighs> like Wow. And I had no choice. I was just going with the flow with this, everyone else. Um, I first went to a wedding and now we wrapped up the wedding. So we're all free to do pilgrimage. So then I went 
on a bus back to Meherabah to celebrate because the wedding was all Baba lovers. It was so sick. We were just playing tabla, like jamming, like chanting koalis the whole way, like Daniel and this guy Nitin, who's just this unbelievable musician who's done it since he was two. He's like just nerding out on, on you know, music and koalis and all this. There's just this ancient tradition of just chanting and loving God, but it's not like, it's not like kirtan. Like in this, this path that I'm a part of over here is like just all divine love like Sufi like mystic wine the wine of the mystic you know it's that sort of vibe if you're if you know what I'm talking about and uh, oh man I mean just the like the koali I'll try to post some of the jam sessions of the koalis I got to like just be like a fly on the wall and like listen to all of them being like the only white dude in the circle just who couldn't speak I couldn't even understand what most things are saying and my buddy Rahul would translate this is what they're saying and you know um, I mean the lyrics of these songs like you are the eternal your eternity i'm nothing but a passing feeling you know um just like just the the sense of love and god god love and longing for god that these sufis have been conveying through their songs since time began it's just so profound so that was a lot of fun and basically just ri riding on that bus i realized oh my god venus is exalted now and i'm on a bus with all these lovers of god and i looked at, i read two of their charts on the bus and two the only two charts i read both have venus exalted in their natal chart I'm like there's a lot of high divine love in this bus and then we rode to meherabad and all just just yeah got to hang out with god in human form <laughs> or not in human form anymore but his bones are there and his presence is there saturating the atmosphere yeah so happy venus exalted to all of you or if you're watching this at another point remember that you only get an exalted venus in your natal chart by cultivating these habits of divine love and longing for god in this life so these guys who had a venus exalted that i read the chart of they have that because they've been doing this for many lives i don't have an exalted venus but I'm trying to cultivate that and maybe in my next life it'll get there, Lord willing, right? But that's the idea of astrology. It's not all fatalistic. You have free will too. You're given gifts and wounds with your chart and it's up to you what you do with them and how you make the most of them. So I'll leave it on that. All right. J Baba, I hope you guys enjoy this wonderful Venus exalted period and I hope you guys all have a wonderful year of 2023. The Lunar New Year just switched over. You know, how how lucky was I to be here in India when the Lunar New Year happened? And it was so amazing because we were dancing at on the wedding night and the moon came out for the first time of the Lunar New Year like while we were all celebrating and dancing. So much soma, so much love. And so yeah, so I hope you guys all have a wonderful Lunar New Year. It's the year of the rabbit. That's my year. I'm the year of the rabbit. It should be an auspicious year for all the other years of the rabbits out there. And uh, take care, you guys. Jay Baba. Ariyom.